the citizenship amendment bill which was passed by the lok sabha yesterday has become a political hot button now this was really an issue which a lot of us probably did not even hear about until a few years ago and suddenly this seems to be dominating national discourse it is dominating the social agitation in assam and other parts of the northeast is dominating parliament and is dominating national politics as well let's try to understand what the bill is and what the opposition to it is considering that the opposition is so vehement one the bill essentially seeks to amend the earlier bill which is a 1955 citizenship bill and give citizenship to illegal immigrants of belonging to six religions from three countries the six religions are the six religions are hindus uh, christians buddhists jains parsis and um, sikhs and the three countries are bangladesh afghanistan and pakistan why is this bill so contentious well effectively what this bill says is that it's going to grant citizenship to those who have illegally immigrated or those who are refugees from these countries but not to muslims so effectively it is singling out muslim refugees from these three countries and considering that most of these refugees from these countries are muslim it seems like that it's a deliberate targeting of muslims and which is what the opposition is alleging let's try and understand what the opposition is all about one as i said uh, the fact that this bill discriminates on the basis of religion in terms of granting citizenship is something that politically is being opposed considering it goes against the tenets of our constitution it also to the opposition seems like the bjp's way of furthering its hindutva majoritarian agenda where whereby it's trying to appease its hindutva vote bank uh, while trying to leave out muslim refugees but what is the opposition to the bill in assam and that is really the crux of the issue which a lot of people in other parts of this country perhaps do not understand let's try and understand historically where assam has stood as far as outsiders are concerned the the sentiment in assam against outsiders or against foreigners has been neutral of religion which means that there has been this anti outsider sentiment irrespective of the religion of the quote unquote outsider in fact it's also been irrespective of the ethnicity of the outsider what do i mean when i say that there was a huge backlash against there's been a huge backlash against bangladeshi immigrants in assam whether they are bengali hindus from bangladesh or whether they are muslims from bangladesh but there's also been and particularly in the 80s and 90s we saw it at its peak under alpha a huge backlash against a lot of other people from states for instance biharis from for instance against marwaris many of whom were forced to flee the state after there was violence by the alpha so the ethnic and indigenous asmis is opposed to any form of uh, legitimizing the citizenship of any foreigner in the country in in the state whether he or she is a hindu or a muslim we know that the process of updating the national register of citizens in assam is ongoing which means the the idea behind which is to identify illegal immigrants from bangladesh and the ethnic asmis the indigenous asmis argument is that if you are going to give citizenship to those ident those hindus who are identified as illegal immigrants it would still not serve our purpose because our purpose is to identify and deport every illegal immigrant as i said irrespective of religion this also which has been the biggest opposition by the ahongona parishad which is the which is the bjp's which was in fact the bjp's ally in assam it just pulled out recently is that this goes against the tenets of the 1985 assam accord the 1985 assam accord had said very clearly uh, that it there should be identification at, of all illegal immigrants and deporting them and that had not mentioned religion at all that was not a factor so the fact that the bjp is pushing for a religion based identification um of city of illegal immigrants and giving citizenship to those who are hindus is something that has irked not just political parties in the nash in the center but the indigenous asmis as well let me start taking a few questions and in fact please do send in your questions we'll be very happy to answer them in the course of this uh, discussion aniket babbar asks why is the bill needed anyway is it a political neeti aniket as i explained this bill is really uh, one of the promises of the bjp has been before the 2019 elect 2014 elections had been the citizenship bill as well as the as well as the nrc as i said the idea is to fit into its hindutva politics uh, the bjp wants to be seen to delivering on the hindutva agenda to some extent the ram temple issue is not in its control as of now given the matter is in court and prime minister narendra 
Modi has made it aptly clear that they will wait for the court's verdict before the government does anything. So the one thing they can push and go to the hardcore Hindutva voter or go to its cadre with is the citizenship bill. They can go to uh, the voter and say, look, we tried to bring this, the opposition stopped us. So which is why this is this is a very, very political move. And as I said, this goes against what the ASMI's person, what the ASMI's people have really wanted all this while. Dr. Norfield asks, why is there so much protest from natives to the bill, especially in northeast? northeast? Dr. No Dr. Norfield, I just, uh, in fact, explained it earlier in this conversation. But to quickly recap, uh, the, the sentiment in Assam has been against all outsiders, irrespective of religion. And they feel that by legitimizing the, the, the refugees who belong to these six religions, they, what the government is doing is instead of deporting them, it's giving them a share, a legitimate share in the resources of the ethnic ASMEs, which is why they've essentially opposed because they feel that their, sh the sh their share of resources, limited resources, limited jobs is being taken by these outsiders and that's why the ethnic ASMEs is being left behind. So that really has been the core of the resentment. Um, Naman Jain says, citizenship based on religion isn't a, sign, isn't a sign of secular democracy. This bill should not be passed. We have basically become the Hindu Israel. Well, Naman, you have a point and that's exactly why the opposition to this bill is so vehement, so vociferous. It's because it is being seen, it is, it's being seen as very unfair. It's being see, seen as undemocratic in a country that claims to be secular. There is really a little logic to, to give citizenship only to Hindus and not others. Well, the argument the BJP has is that these six religions that they are talking about are persecuted minorities in the three countries from where they've come, Bangladesh, Pakistan, or um, Afghanistan. But the fact is that any refugee who's left the country and come here was clearly feeling persecuted for some reason, and which is why they're here. So this kind of argument may not really hold good when you're talking about refugees who fled their countries. They were obviously persecuted. Well, if you're talking about persecuted minorities. We also have the Rohingyas here, which again the BJP is not it's a community the BJP is not standing up for. So given the double talk as far as persecution of minorities and persecution of refugees is concerned, this seems like a bit of a stretch and a bit of a weak argument. Rohit says, um, well, this isn't secularism. Bengali, Muslims, Shias and Ahmadiyas rioted like hell for partition only to be later persecuted by Sunni Punjabis um, who were not serious about partition. Let Pakistan worry about Muslims. Well, I'm, I, Rohit, this is perhaps precisely what a lot of BJP leaders have also been saying. But uh, the, India, as we know, is a secular country and we can't discriminate based on religion, come what may, whether it's any other issue or it is the issue of citizenship. Uh, Bhumish says, will the passage of the citizenship bill affect BJP's prospects in Northeast India during the 2019 Lok Sabha polls, given that BJP is projected to win 20 out of 25 seats in India? Well, I'm not sure BJP is projected to win those many, but yes, that is the BJP's aim. You are right, there are around 25 seats in the whole of Northeast, and the BJP wants to maximize um, in these areas. Well, what has happened politically, we've seen a backlash. We've seen that uh, its ally AGP, which was an ally in Assam, pulled out. We've seen that in Meghalaya, uh, the Sangmas, which is Con Conrad Sangma, who's the um, CM of Meghalaya, is now threatening to pull out of the BJP, does go ahead with this bill. So there would be opposition to the BJP. What the BJP is perhaps hoping to do, at least in Assam, is maybe polarized to an extent. But really, this game is not about the Northeast. In Assam as well, as I said, this is something that goes against the indigenous Assamese wishes. The BJP's game is to send out a larger message of Hindutva to the rest of the nation and to its vote bank, to its cadres across the nation, not the Northeast. So the purpose of the bill, let's let's be clear, is not uh, for Assam or not for the rest of the Northeast. It is for the rest of the country. And the BJP's calculation is that it will help mobilize uh, the Hindu masses behind it as far as the rest of the country is concerned, particularly the heartland or Western India is concerned, and that it will help the BJP really polarize the discourse ahead of 2019. Um, Vijay says a pilot on a jetliner was questioned by an air traffic controller youth, how does our country look from the above, for which the pilot responded that he can see India, Pakistan, Burma, but the lines that are drawn in the world map does not appear. Is it all made up? 
Well, I, I'm not quite sure, Vijay, what you mean by this question, but really effectively what you're trying to say, I, I think, talk about our porous borders. And of course, we know we do have porous borders, which is why we've seen so much illegal immigration happening from Bangladesh. We've seen uh, lots of uh, the refugees come in through Nepal, do, using the Nepal route from other countries. So yes, and there's nothing we can do about porous borders, but now that the process of NRC is on and the identification is on, considering a lot of this immigration was in Assam, really earlier now, now not as much is happening to Assam. Then uh, the fact that NRC is on the whole purpose is to identify them. And at that point, when the BJP is talking about citizenship, Bill is talking about giving citizenship to Hindu refugees, that's when this issue becomes problematic. Because on one hand, you're identifying all uh, refugees. And on the other hand, you're saying that you will discriminate uh, between them on the basis of religion. Kaveen says, can government relocate Hindus in other parts of India? if the ASMEs have a problem. Really, I don't think it's about that. If you can relocate Hindus in other parts of India, you can also relocate the Muslim refugees or Muslim illegal immigrants to other parts of India. So it isn't about relocating a certain number of people. And in fact, what the NRC would eventually achieve is also a big question, considering that um, you know once you have the final list, it could be a few lakh people. I don't think it's going to be more than that. But once you have a final list of people, what will you do with them? Deporting is a big humanitarian issue. It's a big diplomatic issue. So how do you deal with it? It's precisely for that question that I think the BJP somewhere wants to keep pushing the citizenship bill uh, agenda so that it can tell its Hindu voter that, look, we at least protected the Hindu refugees, if nothing else. Um, Ajay says, what about the big loss in Hindi heartland? Did the government not learn a lesson? It's not Hindu or Muslim, where is governance? Well, I think the Hindu heartland losses were, there were a lot of factors. Um, Incumbency was anti-incumbency was a big factor, particularly in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Fifteen years of anti-incumbency. I think the BJP's big takeaway from these losses is that one, it needs to have a better answer as far as an anti-incumbency sentiment is concerned. The two, that farmer crisis, rural crisis is something it needs to deal with. Three, it needs to assuage its uh, upper caste voter for which it's already brought in the 10% quota bill. And four, that it needs to have a, a more uh, positive narrative instead of just poking holes in the Congress. Well, uh, also, the BJP knows that as far as Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh are concerned, it didn't do too badly. I don't think the message the BJP takes back home is that its Hindutva politics isn't working. The BJP knows it has built its politics around the Hindutva agenda ever since the 1980s and that it remains the core part of its politics and its electoral agenda. So don't expect that to be left behind anytime soon by the BJP. Maya says, can we get the Muslim and other minorities that are suffering in Burma and China and other neighborhood countries in this bill? Well, really, the Muslim is not part of this bill, and that has been the whole opposition to this bill, that you are talking about giving citizenship to just a few communities, just a few religions, and leaving out, single-handedly leaving out Muslims. Um, as I said, the BJP's argument has been that the Muslims in these three countries are persecuted. So in that context, I suppose, I, I understand your question that when you're talking about Muslims in Burma and China, that same argument can hold true. But as I said, clearly the BJP is not doing the same thing for Rohingyas, uh, and I, I don't see the BJP doing that from for Muslim minorities from these countries or for Muslim refugees from these countries. So the BJP's agenda, as far as the citizenship bill is concerned, is very straightforward to talk about how it is helping the Hindu uh, voter, how it is talk, uh, helping the Hindu community. In fact, we saw recently uh, a Sam Minister, senior BJP leader, Himanta Biswa Khorma, clearly say that if this bill is not brought in, if many assembly constituencies in Assam will go to the Jinnah. So that was a very provocative statement. It was a very brazen statement, really, for someone who is a minister in the government to make, or someone who is such a senior leader to make. We've seen Amit Shah constantly talk about the citizenship bill and NRC in the same breath, effectively sending out a message to their Hindu voters. So this is very clearly agenda driven by the BJP, and its strategy seems to be quite clear as far as this bill is concerned. Kaveen, how does this bill affect India, India Bangladesh relations? A very good question, Kaveen. As I said, which, that's the big problem here. It's a huge diplomatic issue. Even if you identify uh, a few lakh of people who are not genuine citizens, what will you do with them? Can you send them back to Bangladesh? Will Bangladesh take them back? If it was so easy to send them back, you wouldn't go through this exercise. So it's a big question. It's something that the government really hasn't, I think, decided yet. It's also, let's not forget, NRC is a court-monitored exercise. The 
court will have a say as to what's going to happen next. Uh, just to give our viewers a bit of gist, there were 40 lakh like, people who were left out of the final NRC draft in um, earlier this year, of which around 30 to 33 lakh have actually filed their claims to be included, which means that it's only the small portion that's remaining. That's around 6 to 7 lakhs, which perhaps felt they don't have genuine documents to be able to do it, and which the government unofficially is estimating as the only number of illegal refugees. They think everybody else has documents and will be able to prove. So it's a small number, but even that small number, you don't know what to do with uh, my sense, uh, knowing Sam a little bit, is that by the time the exercise is completed, most people who are identifiable would be given citizenship because they would have the documents. Um, and those who have not submitted documents perhaps have already gone off to other parts of the country, perhaps have already crossed the border and gone back. And we don't know what's going to there eventually. Well, uh, thank you for sending us so many questions. And I do hope there is more clarity on the citizenship bill, how it feeds into the NRC and why it has become such